Former Finance Minister Praveen Gordon's heckling by students at the University of Johannesburg yesterday has laid bare the divisions within the ANC on the issue of white monopoly capital. Gordon and Jonas's lecture on state capture yesterday turned into a slandering match as he hurled allegations at one and all to back his unsubstantiated claims of corruption. Not to be outdone, the students called Gordon a sellout and demanded that Gordon explain his role in the decline of the country's economy. While well, taking to Twitter, Kruleni Mayim Mandile Masina said, and I quote, Defenders of white monopoly capital embarrassed at UJ. UJ. Oh, this was, there was more political depth from students than Kadre, Pravina and Jonas combined. What a shame. Police Minister Fakilio Mbalula tweeted, and I quote, a Shout out to students there at UJ this afternoon. They showed the nation they have clarity, my kind of people, unquote. Let's listen in to how students at UJ categorically refused to buy Gordon's rhetoric on state capture and Zuma. Now, when you start stealing institutions, that begins to lead to stealing money. Put it in frank terms. The academics will describe it in more, academic, in more elegant terms for you. But it is about stealing at the end of the day. And their capitalism is more than 500 years old. The ideas that they are using here about efficiency, about what, they're more than 500 years old. We have a serious decline in our political morality. The quality of politics, the quality of our narrative, the quality of the way in which we engage politically as well, and the morality that underpins it is being eroded every single day. The crisis in South African politics today is the lack of ideology. And Brazil and Mkwebisi, Jonas, they do not have ideology. The way in which the radical economic transformation slogan is used is that, is that used purposively in order to begin a process, if you like, as part of the second phase of the transition as we in the ANC describe it? Or is the slogan being used to actually mask stealing from the state? You can't come to South Africans today and tell them that their enemy is colorless, monopoly capital. Who has our things? Mr. Pravin, you know, you sit on these boards of these global and uh, multinational companies there. Who has the land today? Who controls the JSE today? Who is in charge of large asset management firms today? Who is in charge of all measures of principal capital assets? The uh, accusation is actually made in relation to what has become known as the optimum deal, where as a result of the collaboration of a government department, a government minister possibly, uh, and, and a state-owned enterprise, the value of a mine uh, drops, it's now cheap enough for somebody else to actually buy. But as we were heard the other day, it's not just cheap enough to buy, you actually have a state-owned entity through its chief financial officer, in this case Mr. Singh, actually offering a guarantee to those who would want to borrow money in order to buy the mine. Pravin is captured by white monopoly capital. That's why he doesn't say anything about white monopoly capital. In 2015, in December, when he was reappointed, when President Jacob Zuma was reappointed, or was forced to reappoint him, it was the market, it was white monopoly capital that forced President Zuma to appoint him. So, of course, he cannot bite the hand that feeds him. And stealing of funds as a result of state capture impacts on every single citizen. And they don't want to tell the truth that a capitalist state inherently is a captured state. And that capital in South Africa ex expresses itself as white. We must also accept the reality that uh, irrespective of political parties we come from, our country is in a crisis of leadership. Uh, since this engagement started, because it, is mass, it, it masquerades as an engagement, but it's a clear Save South Africa anti-Zuma campaign. At the lecture, Praveen Gordon, as usual, chose to conveniently ignore several facts. My colleague Abigail Fisahi has more. It's a look at what exactly the, the former Minister of Finance, Praveen Gordon, had to say, and also what he didn't necessarily say. What Gordon says, uh, Jonas was offered a bribe of 600 million rand. What he didn't say is the bribe claim unproven, contested by two other individuals who were witnesses in that regard. Taking a further look at what uh, Pravin Gordon has alleged, now there is attempt to capture the Treasury. Uh, what he didn't say, firstly, claim is pure rhetoric, devoid of any facts. And secondly, Gordon himself accused of capturing Treasury for white monopoly capital. 
Taking a further look, Zwane's moratorium on new mining licenses is hurting the economy, says Pravin Gordon. What he omitted there, opposition to moratorium could be driven by intentions to bypass the transformative mining charter. And also new mining charter attempts to block loopholes and force mining firms to transform and distribute wealth to various communities. Taking a further look, billions have been stolen from SOEs that is either kept in South African banks or in Dubai, says former finance minister Pravin Gordon. What he didn't necessarily say, Firstly, claim not backed by any evidence in that regard. And secondly, white monopoly capital has been instrumental in capital flight out of uh, South Africa over the years. This is a look at what uh, the former Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon, has said. Also, radical economic transformation slogan is being used as a mask for stealing, says Pravin Gordon. What he didn't say, but to discredit call for radical economic transformation, is seen to be driven by pro-white monopoly capital forces. Taking a further look, we should be wary of slogans being coined by PR firms like Bell Pottinger, says uh, Mr. Gordon. What he didn't say, white monopoly capital is not a slogan coined by Bell Pottinger, but a sad reality of South African economy as acknowledged by the ANC itself. That's a look at what we heard from the former Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon.